to rate the roster. A, B, C, D, F. What kind of <laughs> roster is this for the U.S. men's national uh, team? I'm glad you realize there's no E in that grading <laughs> system, you guys and your D.C. rules. Um, honestly, this is a C roster at best, and I can make an argument for mm. it being a D roster. Um, listen, there are a lot of names on that roster that have never been on a U.S. men's, men's national team roster that, that honestly have a handful of first-team football games, if mm. I'm being honest. One player, Joshua Winder, doesn't even have first-team football. Oh, he's got first-team football. He doesn't have top-flight football. Well, there's a there's, difference. There's a big difference. There's when a I difference. can see first-team, that's top-flight. That's what I'm talking about. And the rest of the world, that's what they will talk about. Now, remember when we did this with the Gold Cup and, and, and everything kind of mm -hmm. blew up and we were talking yep. about the Gold Cup? You want to talk really quickly? James Sand, Sam Bynes, Gianluca Busio, uh, Gio Chini, Jesse Zardes, Henry Kessler, Donovan Pines, Jonathan Lewis, uh, Matthew Hoppe, Jackson Ewell, Eric Williamson. Those are some of the players on that Gold Cup roster. None of those players were at the World Cup. None of those players were except maybe one or two, but maybe scratching, you know, that bubble player to get to the World Cup. This is a team that's very much a C, maybe D squad. Now, what I get out of this, if I can get anything out of this, mm -hmm. is uh, a guy like Joshua Winder. That, to me, is a game changer. That changes the game. Here's a 17-year-old, a teenager, that opted for USL instead of Major League Soccer. Mm -hmm. And maybe that four-year contract that Major League Soccer does and said, you know what? USL said, you know what? We'll give you one, two, maybe three years less than Major League Soccer, and we're going to give you the games you need. Because if you sign as an academy player or MLS player, first-team player, you're not guaranteed to get that time. I think here, what I think was guaranteed, it was more probable. And with doing that, in doing so, he caught the eye of a team like Benfica. So before he even played top-flight football, He's on a European radar. And before he even plays with the European team, he's got a U.S. men's national team call-up, Seb. This changes the game for any young player looking for a pathway not only to Europe, but to the U.S. men's yeah. national team. This is a game changer. Shout out to USL because he's not the first USL guy. He's not even the first Louisville City guy, That's right? right. Uh, Jonathan Gomez back in late 2021 got a cap with the U.S. men's national team before... He made the jump to Real Sociedad and, and that big signing out of USL. So USL and specifically Louisville City, I think, deserves a shout out. They're doing something right. Some numbers here. Uh, four uncapped players in the roster, 10 players with 10 caps or fewer. There's 10 World Cup vets, and that sounds like a lot. In fact, it's more than Mexico called in. But when you look at who they are, Dest, Walker, Zimmerman, they're the only two starters. Jesus Ferreira, I guess you'd have to throw in there, too. He was a starter against Netherlands but didn't play at all in the group phase. So it's, it's not the important pieces, Herc, of the U.S. men's national team. I'm surprised you gave it a C. I really thought you could have given it a D. When I look at this, we knew, we knew when this was announced that this would be way off an yeah. A because of the amount of Americans in Europe, which is different from the amount of Mexicans in Europe, and we'll make that comparison in just a little bit. When you take the Americans in Europe out of the American pool, you decimate it. You really do, Herc. So I, I, I'm surprised you went with C. Do you yeah. think that this team is better than the Gold Cup team or no. worse than the Gold Cup worse team? Worse than the Gold Cup okay, team. Okay, so Absolutely. you gave that Gold Cup a C rating. So yeah. really, yeah. really, you're fading this D. This is a D, you're yeah, saying. I, yeah, I said at best just because mm -hmm. those players, there was no World Cup. You're taking 10 players who went to a World Cup. So maybe, but... It's at best to see, but there's a strong argument for it to be a D team. And if you actually look at this team and, and the players they have on this team, and you mentioned, I mean, Jesus Ferreira played 45 minutes at the World Cup. You know, uh, there are players here who may have went but didn't actually get on the field. Walker Zimmerman didn't have the strongest outing. Serginho Dest is not even playing at the moment. So you can make a case as to why they are there. But you look at some of the names on here, um, and I will repeat this. I said it back then. It's getting awfully easy mm. to get a national team cap. It's getting awfully easy to make it to the U.S. men's national team, and that used to not be the case at all. Give me a D. If for no other reason, Herc, give me a D so that our colleagues down in Mexico can have a field day with that. Because you know they had a field day with the C grade that you gave back and I was in the right. Gold Cup two and I years was right. ago. They ate that you up. Wanna, you want to say I was right? Because I was right. You were right. Look at last call-up, by the way, really quickly. The last Nations League call-up, mm -hmm. one player from Major League Soccer, that was Miles Robinson. The rest were, I mean, that, that game against Granada, there were no MLS players. It was an all-Euro mm -hmm. roster.
Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on U2. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.